Evening, I'm Mark Bradley. Uh, I am a principal software engineer well, here at Sainsbury's. You might recognise me from saying hello upstairs. Uh, do that every week. Um, and I'm a software engineer with a passion for testing and TDD. In. Especially, um, if you want to tweet me during this, you can get me at Braddle. Uh, try to hold back the abuse, just be nice. Questions, um, yeah, I'll answer them on the train home. Cool. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, yes. Start with a simple one. What is TDD? TDD is just writing tests before you write code. Not quite. TDD is using some tests to design how your code is going to work and how you interact with your code. Simple as that. TDD is not just unit test, it's a whole suite of different tests. We'll talk about those in a bit. So, now I'm going to convince you why you should be doing TDD. I got interested in TDD because of talks like, uh, I'm going to destroy the guy's name, sorry, Mikhail Rook's I Deploy on Fridays, so anyone at the PHP conference? Talks like that. Talks about pushing your code and being chill about, God. I'm not, I'm not old, young enough to say chill, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and being completely calm and relaxed about your code going into production. Um, the, the key thing that all of these talks about uh, continuous de integration, continuous deployment, continuous de uh, delivery, the key thing with all of them was a good suite of automated tests gives you that safety net to push your code and have no worries about it going into production very little worries about getting production. And that's what got me interested in learning TDD. And it's got me to a stage now where I only really think about code by thinking about the test first. So that's why I use TDD. Um, out of interest, hands up if you write tests, but maybe after you've written a bit of code. Lots of people, yeah. And hands up if you do write your tests and then write your code. Uh, fewer. OK. So we'll start with, if you write tests after you write the code, it's boring. The reason it's boring, I think, is because you probably know those tests you're going to write, they're going to pass. The reason they're going to pass is A, you're writing them to pass. B, you probably have manually tested the functionality in some way as you develop it. No one is going to just bash out some code and assume it works. You'll, I don't know, fill in a form, hit a web page, hit an API endpoint, run something in the command line first to manually test your code. So you know that those tests you're going to write will pass. Those tests you're going to write, some of them are going to be hard to write. Now the reason those tests are hard to write is because your code hasn't been designed to be testable. So when you write tests first, you write the, you, you're designing how the code is used. And you're making it as easy as possible to test and inherently as easy as it possible to use. Whereas if you're writing the tests after you write the code, that, that coder exists. It's, it's not easy to use. And then you have to start refactoring. So next one. Tests are easy, hard to write. So it's very easy to start skipping tests. Who skips tests when they start getting hard to write? Yeah. OK. So you're skipping tests. You've got a green. You've got green. But what does that mean? I've skipped a load of tests, but my tests are green. Well, the bit I tested works, so let's push. I feel happy with that, yeah? No. OK. So you start skipping tests. Right. Now I'm going to cram a shopping-related analogy in, as we're here at Sainsbury's, and I work for Sainsbury's. Let's see how well I can crowbar this in. Writing tests after you've written the code is like going shopping without a shopping list for your weekly shop. If you're anything like me, you go shopping without a shopping list, spend too much money, buy too much chocolate. About right? So same works with your code. If you're not designing how your code should work with your tests, then you're going to either miss features that you require shopping terms, you're not going to buy the things you need to cook your dinner tomorrow. 
you're going to buy too many ingredients that you don't even need, or you're going to add too many features to your um, application, things that your application doesn't even need to do. And you're going to spend a lot of money, or your company is going to spend a lot of money in some way, because once a test makes a, a bug, makes it past the development stage and starts its cycle of moving towards production, that, that bug gets more and more expensive to fix. So if we can fix the bugs whilst we're typing out the code, we're better. Cool. I'll move away from the hideous analogy. Cool. So I will say writing tests before you write code is fun. No? OK, don't believe me. So TDD is a constant, uh, very quick cycle of write a failing test, write some code to make that test pass, and then see a little green. Happy, yay. And you get that every so often, so, or quite often, actually. So it's fun. It's a good challenge. The tests are easy to write. So your tests start off very simple, because your application at this point is very simple. And as the complexity comes into the tests, your application slowly appears, and you have um, developed a new feature. So tests are easier to write. You, well, not that you don't skip tests. If you follow strict TDD, you can't skip tests. TDD says that you write uh, some, a failing test before you write any code. So any code you write, write you have been told to write by your tests. Easy as that. I'm cramming another analogy in now. So, writing tests before you write code is like my slightly weird approach to going shopping. I plan out my week, I have all my features for the week, I have Monday's dinner and Tuesday's dinner and so on. And then I have some unit tests over here, which when I go to the shop, I tick them off as I pass my unit tests. I told you I was really jamming this analogy in. Um, so, there we go. And I don't spend too much money might still buy too much chocolate. OK, so all this writing tests before you write code, well, that's going to slow me down, isn't it? I don't think so. So when you don't write a test before you write code, this is how your time is spent. A lot of, hmm, how should this feature work? Hmm, how should the code look? What classes should I have? Mm. And you might spend a good hour sitting back, thinking, scratching your chin, talking to your elephant. And then you sit and you bash out some code. And then your feature's complete. Woo! And then you're going to write your tests afterwards. I'm just going to slow you down a bit. And then you can push it to production. TDD is different. TDD is different. You're going to spend your time. Quick little think. Ah, first test. Write your test. OK, get this test to pass. OK, test pass. Brilliant. OK, what's the next bit it needs to do? OK, quick little think. OK, test is easy. Gonna write my test. So I think with TDD, you might, I think you probably spend about the same amount of time developing the feature. However, you have a really nice safety net of tests uh, to go with that. Uh, so. There's no reason not to practice it if it takes the same amount of time, gives you a good safety net. So have I convinced you all? You're all going to go away tomorrow and write some tests first and not write any code you've written a test, yeah? Good. Cool. So I'd better move on to how. OK. This is the test pyramid. If you Google test pyramid and look at the images, you'll get something like this. Um, the idea of the test pyramid is the bigger your section, the more of those tests you're going to write. So, hell of a lot of unit tests. And I've, I've put manual tests in there. I'll talk about those because I think there's still a place for manual testing. But the further you up you go, the less of them you have. Okay. Unit tests. You're going to write a lot of these. Lots. Okay. So, unit tests need to be targeted. As you're looking at testing a single piece of functionality in each test. Single piece. That's it. So one, one, one idea, one test, one little bit of code. They need to be 
isolated. They need to be, unit tests should be kept away from everything else in your application. The way we do this is through using test doubles. So any dependencies that your class has, you put a fake version in and you have complete control over it. And they need to be repeatable and predictable. So these tests should run every time with the same result. Um, they should be able to be run in any order. The order of unit tests shouldn't matter. You should be able to run one test, a couple of tests, a few of them. You shouldn't have unit tests that go, oh, this one sets something up, and then this one carries on working with it. If you want a, um, when you're writing unit tests, you need to set up everything on the top of the test, then check everything, and then move on to the next test with a whole new set of objects. They should run amazingly fast. You're looking at minutes for an entire suite. Very few minutes at that. And like I said, if you're practicing strict CDD, with, um, you should be able to achieve 100% code coverage with your unit tests. Cool. So we're moving on up now to the acceptance tests. Acceptance tests should be defined by your product owner, your, I don't know, your product project manager, your business domain experts, basically. These tests ensure that when you create the feature you've been asked to create, they do everything the business require. That's it. And they should be defined, yeah, defined by your product owner. Uh, this is where BDD sits perfectly, because then you can have a shared language which us technical people understand, and the business can sit and read and go, oh, I, I understand how that feature's going to work. So using Gherkin here is really lovely. Uh, because the requirements of these tests are written by your product owner, you're not looking at massively high co test coverage because they just care, well, if the customer does a good thing, the good thing happens. If the customer does a bad thing, they get a message. They don't care about the intricacies of exceptions and databases disappearing and stuff like that. So you're not looking at amazingly high test coverage at the acceptance test level at all. Right, moving up, integration tests. This is where, it, as programming goes, there's multiple definitions of what an integration test is. Fun. So some people say it is tying some units together to check they work. So when you're writing your unit tests, obviously you're right, working in isolation. You come together and you start throwing them together and make sure they work. Or you're also testing the integration points of your application. So APIs you're using, databases you're using, mail servers, anything, queues. Um, and you're going to get pretty low test coverage here because you're just is testing a slight bit. So you're looking at, test, you're looking at testing uh, about 10% of your code, not massively high. Basically, with integration tests, you want to check that unit test for lock works, unit test for door works. Ah. <laughs> That's what we're trying to avoid with integration tests. OK. <laughs> so system or end-to-end -end tests. You need very few of these, maybe only one. The system or end-to-end -end test should test the entire core journey of your application using as many of the real dependencies your system has as possible. Um, basically, you're looking for the happy paths through your application. So I don't know, customer signs up, customer logs in, customer buys a lot of stuff, checks out, and you get the money. Bang. That's pretty much what your end-to-end -end test is going to look like. Cool. So, as I said, I'm going to mention manual tests. Oh, no. Uh, code coverage on your end-to-end -end test is going to be ridiculously low, like 5%. You're not looking to test the intricacies now of um, your business logic. You just want the happiest path through your code. Cool. Manual tests. Now, there's still a place for manual tests. Uh, but they shouldn't block anything going to production. Manual tests are looking for the oddities, the things you would never have thought your application could do. You're looking at okay, exploratory testing with your QA um, to find, you know, when the customer does weird things, oh, it breaks. OK, we didn't expect that to happen. Not the big, hairy bugs of, I don't know. But anyway, cool, moving on. So there's those tests, um, and also the tests Pyramid only really covers um, your functional requirements of your application. It doesn't cover your non-functional requirements. So you still uh, want to look at things like load testing, security testing, 
and things like that on top of this. Okay. So, the TDD cycle. So if you practice TDD, you spend a long time going around this circle. You write a failing test, you make the test pass, if the code you've written is ugly, you refactor it, and then you move back to the step one, write some more tests. Okay, so that's the TDD cycle. I like to take it a little step further. I like to use Uncle Bob's three rules of TDD. His three rules are, write no production code until you've written a failing test. Sounds, um, sounds pretty similar so far, but this is where it starts to change. Do not write any more tests than it takes for the test to fail. Compilation error, okay, we're in PHP, so PHP Storm warning you something doesn't exist or something's gonna fail counts here as a test failure. At that point, you stop. Then you move to your production code and you write just enough production code to make that test work in whatever way it's failing. Then you go back to finishing off your test, back into production code, in and out, until you have a completed test. At step three, you're looking to do the simplest thing possible, even if that means hard coding. You're looking for the easiest thing, absolutely the easiest thing. And remember, and that's where the refactor comes in, that hard coding will disappear with possibly your next test or the one after. So your implementation might, what you write, the code you write for quite some time might not be your final implementation. Um, it doesn't make sense, but I'll do a demo in a minute and we'll see. Cool. So, that's the TDD cycle I talked about earlier. We talked about these acceptance tests. So, I think this is more what it looks like. So, first of all, I'd like to work from an in, uh, outside-in approach. So, big acceptance test from my product owner. Start writing that. Ah, I need a new thing. So, I'll start unit testing that thing and I'll go through this cycle round and round. And I'll pop out and I'll go, okay, bit of my acceptance test passed, move on to the next bit of the acceptance test, okay, I needed to do that. Oh, I need another new thing. Round and round inside my unit tests and then back out. So unit tests will be passing every minute or so. Whereas your acceptance test might not be passing until towards the end of the day or a couple of hours. So, so that's what your life looks like doing TDD. It's fun, I promise. Cool. Okay, so now, how do we lay out a unit test? So, unit tests, to make them nice and readable, uh, we can use the arrange, act, assert pattern. Really simple. First thing you do in your unit test is you arrange all the things you need to run. So, in here, I am setting up two instances of an integer, one with the value 5 to a uh, value, uh, variable called 5, and one with the value 4, the variable called 4, and then I want to act upon those. So, I'm going to put the code that I'm testing under test. So, I check that 5 is greater than 4 and sign that to a variable, and 4 is greater than 5 and sign that to a variable, and I check my outcomes. It's as simple as that. So, that's what a test looks like. Cool. Okay, now I get brave. Ah. Right. Let's start with absolutely no code. Cool. Okay. So, we're all British, so we all know what a queue is, so I went with one of those. So we're going to implement abstract data type queue. Um, I tried to come up with a way of doing acceptance testing and diving down into it, but we'd have been here for a week, so I didn't. So we are going to implement our queue. Um, to make it fun, I'm going to add some restrictions on us. All those lovely PHP array functions that help us, they're gone. They don't exist anymore. Um, add so that makes it fun. Uh, second thing I'm going to do is, do you know how we like to do things like this? Dollar array equals new array, and then we assign like this. Oh, array, square brackets equals thing, oh, thing, bad typing. This doesn't work anymore either. Unfortunately, today, you have to know exactly where you want to put it. So you want to put it in the first location, you add a zero, you want to put it in the second location, you add a one. Okay? Now, you all think I'm brave for about to do live coding examples. Ha ha ha, you're writing the code. Right, okay. I shall start with the first test. So, new test, 
bang. Right, we let's start nice and easy. What should our queue be able to tell us? I'll tell you what, let's see if the queue is empty. So we will do a test empty queue. Okay, so simple so far. So we can whoop, add a new, make a new queue. Let's call it empty so it's very clear what it is. New queue. Cool. Simple so far. Okay. So dollar this cert uh, true. Dollar empty is empty. Bang. Happy? No. Well. Okay. Yeah. True. Let's do that. X save lines as O. Uh, uh, I'm getting ready for Brexit. Uh, is empty. <laughs> Sheer blind panic and stockpiling, isn't it? Uh, there we go. <laughs> is empty. There we go. Cool. Nice and clean. There we go. Okay, so I've changed something. So Uncle Bob says we should stop at this point because is empty isn't, uh, well, it's not going to compile. So let's solve that problem first. Now I could run a test to tell me that, but luckily I have a lovely IDE that tells me, so I'll let it solve my problems. Bang. Excellent. Yeah, it's public. Let's be good. Let's use PHP 7. Let's do return types. So it should be turning a bool. Okay. Save. Cool. So, should we run the test? Uh -huh. Run. Okay. Oh, right. I have an error. Still got an error. So, I'm now using return type, so I have to return a Boolean. So, let's make it do that, shall we? Return. Oh, uh, let's return false. Uh, Boolean. Okay. So, our code will now compile. It's Good valid code, so we can run our tests again. Uh, um, do it from here. Okay. So we're expecting true, we're getting false. Yes, thank you. First test, let's see if that does it. So true. Save, run tests. Test passing. Excellent. We've written some code. Save. He's passing. Excellent. Right. Okay. So our queue can tell if this is empty. So let's make a non empty queue, shall we? So public. Oh, no, let's do these right. Bang. Uh, test non empty queue. Cool. Okay. Right. So Make it nice and simple with naming. One, we'll add one thing to our queue. Uh, it's all right, we're British, someone will join it soon. Here we go, queue, uh, dollar one. Well, we join a queue. We can use push and pop, but everyone joins queues. Uh, let's add Dave to the queue. Okay, so, well, our code's going to error again. Our IDE is telling us it, so we'll solve the problem. Yeah. Alt, enter, add a method, yep, yeah. no, let's not call it string, that's not a great thing, is it? Let's call it person, there we go, it uh, doesn't return anything, void, be really good, all the things, there we go. We have to say for a test, I mean return type. Um, so tests will never return anything, um, so yes, you could do if you're being really good. Um, Yes, PHP 8 only requires it at the moment on uh, setup functions and stuff like that. Return void, you might find out in a minute, we'll see. Okay, cool. So our uh, setup is done. So let's do uh, is not empty equals dollar one is empty. There we go. Cool. So the assertion is nice and easy again. So dollar this. Oh, thank you. See, live coding. It's a joy of programming. Everyone joins in. Cool. 
I'm not joking. I wasn't. Yeah, thank you. I didn't mean that to be rude. I realised I come across rude. Sorry. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we'll run our tests again. Okay. Who wants to volunteer and tell me the easiest way to make both tests pass? Is if you just set a flag that doesn't have So just, just add some random. Sometimes it will pass. <laughs> <laughs> we said repeatable and predictable. I won't tell you about the code I saw where someone extended PHP unit to add a search roughly, which took an integer or took two floats, and then it was close enough so that it passed. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, repeatable and predictable answers. So your suggestion was to add a Field? Yeah, out of the field. Yeah. Tell it whether it's empty or not. Private. Nice name is empty. Uh, we'll default it to true to make our stuff easier. And then we can just return it. Uh, no. OK. So our first test should still be passing. So what do we need to do to make our second test pass as well? Not a set true. Uh, huh? False. Yeah, cool. Just do that. Dollar this is empty equals false. Both tests going to pass? Everyone happy? Yeah, should we try it? Boom, green. Another win. See? It's fun. Told you. Which, which one? Well, I was making it clear that I expect it not to be empty. Because one is empty, should... No? Okay, yeah, go on, yeah. I'll go with what the mobs say. I'm not stupid. It's a mob program. We're all joining in. Uh, Shift F6, there you go. Is it? Well, no. We're all writing the code. We're all learning. Cool. OK, so we know if it's empty or not. Should we move on to seeing how many people are in our queue? Let's have a go. So we'll start with our empty queue, shall we? Let's check there's zero people in our empty queue. New test. Uh, empty queue size. OK, so quick copy and paste job. Save me some time. Go. So size equals dollar empty size. So code's going to fail again, so let's uh, solve that problem. Add the method. We'll be good. It turns ints. Let's pick a nice default. Oh. Negative one. Never going to have ne no people in yeah. negative amounts of people in the queue, so that's a good way to start. Okay, test looks good again. Everything's valid code, so shall we move on? Dollar this. Uh, assert equals zero dollar size. Okay, all looks good, so we run the test. Uh, okay some reason my hard coding didn't work. How do I fix this? Easiest possible way. Thank you. Yep. Minus one to zero. Bang. Done. The hard coding feels weird at first, but you get used to it. Um, and you just slowly build up functionality. So here we go. Right. Well, let's do the next thing then. Uh, we'll take Q number one. Uh, new test method, uh, one Q size. Let's do this. Okay. So, uh, got Q, got one person in it. Got size equals dollar uh, one size. So, we'll write our assertion. So, equals one dollar size. Cool, nothing's erroring, so we can run the test and be all good. Okay. 
Answers on the postcard. Go on. Cast for exclamation mark in the <coughs> So an int cast, yeah, of exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Yeah. This end. Oh, no, this. <laughs> cool. Lazy, lazy yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. There we go. Just pass. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's move on to our next bit, shall we? Okay. Uh, let's make a new test. Okay. And this is fine. Like, challenging yourself to find weird things makes the day fun. So, we'll do uh, 3Q. And see, here we go. Right. So, uh, dollar 3. Join. Dave. Sally. Bob. There we go. Three people in our queue now. Excellent. Right. Oh, no. No one checked out the typo. Come on, you're not a very good mob. <laughs> Okay, so dollar size equals dollar uh, three. three. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> See, definitely a typo. Sorry. <laughs> three. There we go. Got it right time. There you go. So time lucky. Size. Okay. Still all good. Dollar set. Ah. Three. Oh, yeah. I would have done it. Cool. Okay, so we know this is not going to pass. Come on then. No. We'll add a counter now, yeah. So let's add a counter. So have a nice private size zero. Okay. Then we're gonna increment it in our join. So dollar this size plus 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 first. Okay. Do what the mobs say. That's how we got Brexit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I shouldn't make political jokes, this is going to go on to the internet, isn't it? Can you cut that? <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. Yeah, don't need that. And we'll just remove, return this size. Save. Cool. No, 73, I think. Don't know. Uh, don't know. I'll have a look in a second. I think 7.2. That's where I read that. Cool. Our test is green. Okay. But now we need to talk about that ugly code bit. So, it's absolutely hideous, isn't it? Um, oh, I, th I think we can do a bit of a clean up at this point. I think I can get rid of the is empty. So, I'm going to do that now. Well, so we know that if the size is zero, it's empty, so let's change that. This is empty. Oh, no, sorry. So, hang on, someone's going to say it, isn't it? Zero equals equals dollar this. Run the right way, everyone, thank you. Size? Okay. So there we go. So now we don't need to set it when it comes into here, so we can get rid of that. And we don't need that anymore. Oh, yeah, I'll do three. Why not just cast it to Boolean? Yep. <laughs> yeah, go. No, 
needs to be negative. Exclamation mark in front of the door. Just exclamation mark. Just exclamation mark. Just that, yeah. Cool, there we go. See? You made it better than I did it five times yesterday. <laughs> There we go, lovely. That's readable. Cool. Hmm? Everyone happy? So it goes much smaller, removed a variable we didn't need anymore. Clean. <coughs> Although our tests are getting big, and I did a lot of copy and pasting earlier. So we can resolve that problem next. So let's make our tests a little bit smaller. So uh, who was mentioning the setup needing a void? Uh, new setup method. Oh, this doesn't know. It's not that good. No, it's hang on. Override method. Mm, bloody hell, there it is. There we go. Cool. So, the setup method gets run before every test and allows us to get things ready for each test. So, if we take our empty and move it up here, we have a nice little private. Uh, dollar empty. Like that. So now move this line up here. Call this. Looking quite neat. Uh, still need that. This. No, no. Kill those lines. Cool. So our test is. Just making it a little bit easier to read, a little bit less code duplication. Uh, cool. And we can do the same for here. So we can get rid of this now. X. This. There we go. And we can do the same with one. Make it smaller again. So we'll bring one in. Private. One. So I was. <coughs> oh. What was that? Sorry. They all start off empty. You just call a Q. Yeah. Even tidier. Thank you. Nice suggestion. So let's do that. So X. Dollar Q. Cool. Uh, it's empty. Da, 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 da. One. So that this Q uh, join. So refactoring doesn't just cover your code, it covers your test as well. Keeping your test nice and readable makes it easier to write tests as you go. So there we go. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm going to cheat and quickly make this a small one-liner. Done like this. Q. Uh, we're doing is empty. Uh, it doesn't know it's a Q anymore. Make my life easier, please. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So I won't finish all the tidying up, but you can kind of see where it's going. Um, nice and clean, making everything a little bit easier as you go along. OK, so let's move on to the, tip, the, the real reason we join a queue to get served. Let's do that. So let's start with our empty queue. So new test method, test uh, pop empty. OK, so we need to make a decision now. We need to start and design what we want our queue to do if we try to pop on an empty queue. Do we want it to return a null or throw an exception? Exception. exception? Cool. Let's do that then. So we can assert that uh, this uh, exception, expect exception, there we go. You want a specific type or should we just use a default? I think it's going to be easier, isn't it? We'll do default uh, uh, exception. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, there we go. So check that the exception class is thrown when we pop on empty. So this slightly mucks up the arrange act assert because you want to you have to 
set up to check your exception happens before you do anything. So your assertion comes at the top at this point, but there's no way around that. You can do a try catch, well, but you can use annotations. That's can yes, you can also use annotations. So yeah, it's deprecated. It's deprecated. Uh, see, this is what you let happens if you let speakers join in your talk. Uh, Q pop. There we go. Okay, so pop doesn't exist, so we'll solve that. Public. Uh, good, just going to return string. Save. Okay, and we can run the tests. Okay. Well, I did a refactor and forgot to run my tests. Aren't I bad? It's okay. Uh, size equals. Q. Oh, yeah, thank you. Empty. Uh, Q. Let's see. Pair programming, mob programming. Someone there to be your second brain. Always good. Excellent. So it's. Uh, yeah, back to being good again. Okay. So we're expecting an exception. So easiest way to make this solve, not someone at the front. Throw the exception. Yeah, simple as that. So when we pop, throw new uh, Okay, and our test should pass. Excellent. Okay. So move on now. So. Uh, let's pop from all. Let's skip the one queue. Let's go to popping off the uh, whole queue. Start with a big queue. So uh, pop three. Okay. So let's do dollar this queue uh, join. I'll come to you like now, uh, Dave. Let's have some suggestions on what our assertion should be as we pop. Should the value. Yep. And so. the new size. Value. So let's save some lines. We'll do dollar this. Uh, so equals. So when we pop, first one in our queue was Bob. So Bob should be there. And we do dollar this. Q pop. Okay. And then we can check the size. Let's be good and let's just quickly add that. So equals uh, so three in the queue, one off, two dollar this. Q size will be affected by previous tests, right? Size will be affected by previous tests because in the previous test you were at some values in the queue. So the as I said, so the before function, uh, setup function, gets run before every test gets run. So before every test, there's a whole new instance of the queue. So our, the, basically, the, the first line here, we have an empty queue every time. OK. And we'll check the size. OK. There we go. Okay, so let's save that and run the tests. Okay, get an empty queue exception. So, suggestions on how we solve our problem. Can we return Bob? Hmm? Was that sorry? Return Bob. Return Bob. Yeah. So that won't. That will fix this problem. But we've also got the test above. So. Well, you try the size first. Okay. So if dollar uh, this size, yeah, okay, uh, is empty. Not go. Okay. Oh, just draw an example. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Quit early. Yeah. So add a guard statement in. There we go. Nice safe code. Else we just return Bob. Well, not yet. My test hasn't told me. All I know is I'm getting empty queue. I should be getting Bob. There we go. Now I can do it. Uh, so minus minus dollar size. Save. Okay. Cool. Can we just set size? Yeah. Why do you just do this size? You can set size to do that. Yeah, it's even easier. So let's do that. No. There you go. See. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. Should we add another assertion? Make sure we're still working. We So this second person off, Sally. Okay, and we'll check the size again. Copy and paste is quicker. So we're down to one. Okay. Ah. Uh. So should we add an array now to put that? Because at the moment we haven't got anything to store it. We've just got some really weird hard-coded stuff. <laughs> so. What was that? Sorry. So we could use a queue object, but that's definitely cheating for this. And I did say we we're going to use an array. So let's add an array in. Uh, we'll call it people. Right. Okay, so we need to add people to our array. So we can do it in the join. We can start throwing them at the array. This is where this, uh, the switch is to the other end now. There we go, which allows me to do this. Uh, people. So I said no magic PHP helpfulness now. You have to know the index, so size. Dollar. Person. So. Yep. So. Yep. So this that's what this does. So, if you have the double plus beforehand, it increases the size and then returns, so it would return one. If you have the double plus afterwards, it returns zero and then increments. <laughs> Don't think it works. You'll get one. But it... Huh? That would give you one. Yeah, no, that would. Sorry, that would give you zero. Sorry. So, give. So, yeah. Practice it five times. Trust me. <laughs> cool. So now we can start removing things from our array rather than using this. So, let's remove the hard coding. So, uh, well, we can do this quite easily. We can do this in a one-liner still. So we can do. 
Uh, well, actually, we can fix this. So we want to do return. Uh, so of this uh, people. Hmm. Now, size gives us the, la the last, uh, well, the new blank, the next blank element in the array. So that's not going to help. So I think we're going to need to start tracking where the front of our queue is. Okay, so let's do that. So private dot front zero front zero. Okay. So then we can return dot of this front. Okay. So now we should get Bob and Sally. Everyone happy? Let's run it. Ah. Still needs to decrease, decrease the size. Forgot that. So, got this size. Uh, okay. okay, cool. So that seems to be working. And we'll just add our final assertion. Copy. So, Last one off the list is Dave, uh, Q is Dave. And one final assertion. Let's check that when uh, Dave is gone. So true. What's that? So you need to keep track of the front and the back now because I'm not shuffling everything down the queue. At the moment, I'm very inefficiently using the array. So as people leave, basically the group of people in the array will slowly move along, so you'll have a very front, uh, very uh, empty front of an array and then some people and then nothing. Um, so TDD is about making the functionality work, not making the most efficient um, use of the uh, most efficient code. You can, so if you want to implement sorting, you can do TDD to implement sorting and you'll probably end up with a bubble sort and we can agree that's not the most efficient way to sort things. Um, but your test got you there to, to a point where you have something that sorts. Uh, same here, at the moment we're not looking at the efficiency of the code. Um, we don't have any memory issues, we're not caring about the non-functional requirements, just the functional requirements of a queue. Okay. So, uh, set true dollar this is empty. So, okay, we'll run this. Oh. This queue is empty. Uh, thank you. Mm. you. Shut it out before I don't look so stupid. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. So we have a working queue. I'm omitting the fit there. So there are more tests to add. Uh, this won't yet work if you pop and join and pop and join. But you all said you were going to go home and practice TDD, so go home and add the test for popping and joining and joining and popping and stuff yourself. Okay. That's not... Oh, my slides have disappeared. There we go. Cool. So hopefully I've shown you TDD is easy. TDD is fun. You get to shout at someone at the front. If you pair program, you get to shout at someone else. Uh, if you do it on your own, you just get to shout at yourself or your elephant. Um, cool. Word of warning. Don't rely, if you're brand new to TDD and you're going, this is good, I'm going to go and rely on this. I'm going to write a load of tests tomorrow for my code. I'm going to push it to production. Everything's going to be fine. Don't do it. Um, lots of weird, when you're learning TDD, um, and when you're practicing it, do it on a pet project first. Do it on your training days. Just definitely don't rely on it. Uh, I found some code that I'd written, and I happened to, in one of the tests, accidentally asserted that I'd set the mock-up correctly. No test, no code was being tested. Whoops, bad. So please don't go and do this in production. Say, Mark said, TDD will solve all of our problems. I'm not going to be there to back you up. Cool. If I have inspired you, 
There are some awesome books out there. Uh, the top two are very much Java flavored, um, but they are awesome big books on testing. Uh, they take two different approaches to testing. One takes the London school, one takes the Chicago school. Not going to go into it. Read both of them, see the differences. Um, if you want PHP flavored books, uh, Chris Hartridge is the Grand Prix programmer. Um, has many books, they are very good. Uh, there's a PHP unit specific one if you just want to learn how to use your tools, so PHP unit. Um, there is minimum viable testing, least testing you need to do to feel good, and one about building uh, test driven developers. All awesome books. Uh, digital and dead tree copies available of all. Here's a brave bit questions. Oh, hang on. There you go. Sorry, I'm not here to help you, Craig. Go, no, run, really. run. Uh, I'm sorry. Is it fine to have a few asserts in one test, or should test one have just one assert? No, test can have many assertions. That's absolutely fine. Um, and there is no any standard about that or any recommendation. As, as many as you feel you need to be comfortable. Um, you look. Yeah, just basically you're looking to check everything runs as you expect and everything happens. So in that last one, we kind of, I could have moved them each into one, but we, we, we're going, we're popping. So something should come off. We'll check that's happening. And we'll check the size decreases. That's absolutely fine, yeah. So. OK, just give me a second. <laughs> Can someone over there have a question next? Um, it's more of a question with regards to you was checking for like zero, you was checking for one, then you was checking for three. Yeah. Would you kind of make a test that's more dynamic in the sense of if you wanted to check for five, six, seven, eight, would you create a, a test for that or the whole purpose is, is obviously be a bit more static and be a bit more, I want to know if there's going to three and that, whether that works? So you, you could do something dynamic and randomly select a number. But it's that, that simple re repeatability. If you have three lines that you've definitely written that add something, then you know that's you know, it's just simpler. So yes, you, you could do that. But I'd prefer to just write everything out. So. Uh, thank you very much for a very good talk. Um, cool. So probably in our industry, uh, someone that has more than a couple of years already that knows that obviously there is a TDD or some kind of testing or production driven, sorry, production bugs driven development in yeah. the end. So uh, that's why my personal question. So from your experience of, of probably a little bit of uh, more years than I do yeah. uh, coding, uh, how it looks for the industry altogether, for different projects that you worked on and for different companies that you worked in, is there a hope for guaranteed software that will actually be working all the time? So, TDD won't remove all the bugs. There will still be bugs. But TDD will get rid of the big, hairy ones. Um, there will still be the little bits that slip through. Um, um, and as for the industry, I'd like everyone to test all their things. Um, I want to know that when I'm hitting a website, the developer's written some tests, and I'm not going to have issues. So yeah, test all the things, everyone. Who, oh. uh, imagine the situation uh, before you're uh, writing a, a single line of code. You're writing a test, and it's starting to be complicated. Yep. Uh, do you writing a test for that? When um, writing a test, because uh, yeah, basically I was uh, found a situation when I was writing a test, and uh, it was complicated, and I was thinking, should I write a test for that? So, short answer, yes, you should write a test for that. Um, was the rest of the, was it, were you adding code to an existing code base that uh, didn't have tests? Just a, just a, just a hypothetical uh, situation. Okay. For, let's... So... Um, the, 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 the test drive and the development uh, designing your applications, so uh, uh, the, 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 all the ways uh, uh, you want to test starting to be uh, complicated. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the way I work, my, I'm quite lucky. My product owner writes me out some nice gherkin. We sit together and make it 
unified across all of our tests. Uh, and that's where I start. So he sits and defines what the first test should be for me. And then I start solving those problems. Um, if you've not got such a, a work environment where you can have that, you're going to have to take their tickets and kind of try to transform them. Um, we, I work on a team that's cross-functional and we use, um, so I move between PHP and Swift and Kotlin for Android. And Swift doesn't have a BDD framework. You have to, so we have to take the BDD and convert it into a test. And yes, sometimes writing the, the first tests can be very difficult, especially when you're driving UI, um, if you're starting at that level. Uh, but I think as you learn and persevere, you, it's a, so TDD is kind of, you've got to learn two things. You've got to learn the technique, but then you've got a whole new tool set that comes with it. So, you know, PHP unit, uh, BHAT if you're using uh, BDD, um, and then, you know, you've got things like Mink to drive websites and all stuff like that. So it's, the learning curve is, can be, at the start can be quite high. Um, I hope that answers your question. Right. Catch me at the pub afterwards. I think we've got time for maybe one more question. Okay. This one. What happens if you just write bad tests? <laughs> That's why you practice first. Um, so if you write bad tests, then yeah, you're going to miss things. Um, where do we go? Um, I don't know, yeah, if you write bad tests, then you, you can't rely on them. So it's that, that thing of practicing. That's why we st I started off with a queue. It's saying everyone understood. Um, so CodeCat is a perfect as a testing environment to kind of hone your testing uh, craft. So um, if you want to practice it, go away and finish off the queue, take something easier and do a stack, uh, implement something simple, and then build yourself up. And to, so uh, you're starting off with with that. We were using a very we were using basically only PHP unit, and we're starting off really simple. Once you've got your head around PHP unit, maybe move on to adding mocks with something like Makito into it, and just build up your uh, your testing tool set as you go. We gonna make Craig run around anymore? Please not. No, I think that was it. Um, <laughs> I am sorry, but I'm not running around all night. That's all right. Um, cool. So yeah, um, thank you very much, Mark. Cheers.